How real did it feel to you? And how much did you feel you had to prove your place? I mean, I felt it a lot. Of course you do. And it was also, I was coming into a label where like, there was somebody that was red hot at the time. You know what I'm saying? That was just on fire and we're- How will you act when the attention is not on you? Sometimes people say, you know what, you know, I did my own thing, I got my indie deal, I've got uh, success here, I performed, he performed there. But now he's saying I'm coming to a house, he's coming to a stable, he's coming to a label. There's some hot artists where right now you're competing for the attention for that production company to promote you versus the hot artist. How are you gonna act? Are you gonna act entitled? Or are you gonna say, you know what, let me prove my worth. What's cracking everybody? My name's Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And in this episode, I'm gonna be doing a reaction to Jack Harlow and uh, during his interview with Zane Lowe. And just with every reaction video, I don't watch these beforehand. I'm reacting to these on the fly because this channel is dedicated to help you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. So uh, before I even get started, I, th I think I need to rephrase that, what's cracking to the, what's popping instead, what's popping. I hear that song is all over the place. I just heard the song right now. My team played the track for me and apparently a lot of people are doing TikTok videos off that song. So let's take a look at what Jack Harlow here has to say about his uh, rise to success, fame, and fortune. Do you like the environment you're in? Do you like this, what success tastes like? How do you hold on to it and move in a world that with a lot of eyeballs and a lot of attention and a lot of pitfalls yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Has, that, has it gotten to a point now where you have to be super self-conscious and careful about the way you move? For all the artists out there, entrepreneurs, aspiring millionaires, be careful what you pray for, man, because you just might hit it. And uh, man, when you get there, I'd say the journey's rough, a lot of zigs, a lot of zags, the journey is rough, but once you get there, man, not to say that it's impossible, but once you get there, awesome feelings of success, accomplishing a goal. But at the same time too, when there's another level, there are the devils. I ha yes, 100%. And it's made me more self-conscious in general. I've become more vain since I got into this. Like I used to not care how I dressed or looked. Like how I dressed in high school like was shameless, bro. Like, <laughs> but I always had soul. I, I think I'm lucky that like I figured out how I wanted to look later because I like spent so many years on who I I guess it's different in the entrepreneur world because uh, yeah, I guess artists and uh, and maybe athletes too as well would probably fit in this mix, but uh, don't care how you look. Uh, but as an entrepreneur, as an aspiring entrepreneur, man, you gotta look the part, you gotta act the part, you gotta talk the part before you become the part. Uh, I guess it's opposite here in a, in a different world of expression, which is artists and athletes. Self-conscious thing is interesting to me, because that's no- So what were you, t but when you say self-conscious, what are you asking me about? When you said before, yeah, I'm more self-conscious, because success and attention breeds that sense of self, it goes from self-aware to self-conscious because you're afraid that if I yeah. make the wrong move, what this, what yeah, that. Yeah, I, I also, yeah. That's not fun, that's gotta be. I'll tell you this, man, when, when I was coming up, thank God social media wasn't around when I was coming up. <laughs> thank Lord Jesus that uh, there is no cameras in people's phones because when I was coming up, man, we had these old Sprint phones, these old Nextel phones. Thank goodness that when I was coming up, when I was making a little bit of money, a little bit of success in, in my world, not nothing compared to hip hop money or, or, or athlete money at that time. To me, making a lot of money was making 60,000 a year, 80,000 a year, $100,000 a year. That was my come up as an entrepreneur. And um, thank goodness social media wasn't around and people weren't snapping pictures every five seconds or recording video every five seconds. Today, everybody's got a phone and uh, you gotta be, if there's anything to be self-conscious about is that somebody somewhere has probably got a camera. That's the part when it stops being fun. Well, that's why you see, um, people see all the big artists, they stop tweeting. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, <laughs> yeah. the stakes are too high. Yeah. They're feeding too many people they grew up with. Uh -huh. And like, I can feel that for me a little bit. It's, I'm just like, we're funding the dreams of so many people. Like, this is a team effort. Like, this isn't just me, this is Kentucky. Yeah, like, yeah. There's so many people that are like coming yeah. along um, and contributing to this that like, playing games on the internet or or just expressing myself just because they want me to express myself and being yeah, yeah, connected, yeah. like the stakes are too high. Now yeah. I haven't done that, but I, I haven't stopped, but I see why they stop because it's like, oh, you think you're about to take down this empire I built off a tweet? Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm gonna do? Not yeah. tweet, you're not <laughs> playing yeah, on me. So, Yeah, yeah I, I totally get that because um, when he says that you're feeding a lot of people, so on the come up, you know, think, 
God that uh, one takes the courage and the boldness to go out there and step out and make a name for themselves. And then when they do, uh, whatever level of success that you're attaining and you're serving and helping a lot of people, a lot of your dreams are starting to come true, is that uh, you do one thing wrong. Boom. A sponsor pulls out. Boom. A client pulls out. Boom. You know, your, your best friends, uh, you know, have the wrong messages and they're trying to sabotage your work and trying to extort you for cash. That type of crap happens. And so I guess as what he's trying to share here, and I've experienced this in my own life, that uh, I remember <laughs> I remember when I got promoted to a chief distribution officer and, uh, and, uh, and uh, I had an hour and a half long talk with HR because I like to joke like, no tomorrow, and especially come from military where there was, there was uh, listen, you had to have tough skin in the military. I mean, we uh, crossed everything. We went high, high, high blows, low blows in terms of uh, just giving you a hard time. And by the way, if we didn't mock you, if, you didn't, if we didn't uh, give you a hard time, that means we didn't like you. So it's a different world today where so many people, sadly, are so damn sensitive about some of the things that you say and uh, you feel that you cross certain lines. You're just having jokes. You're just having fun. But uh, I hear what he's saying because corporate sponsorships are there. You got to work with people who are chief diversity officers that have to screen everything that comes out. The corporation is going to be funding something, sponsoring something, marketing something, and you say something off camera and then they pull out and they don't want to fund your record or they want to fund your deal or pull out their sponsorship and endorsement of you. That's money. And that money was feeding friends and family. That money was creating jobs. That money was supporting your lifestyle and funding your goals and your dreams. So as you elevate, being more mindful of what you say, it's, uh, it's very important. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14, it goes like this. From the fruit of their lips, people are filled with good things and the work of their hands bring them reward. So if you got good things coming out, man, you're doing some positive things out there, awesome. The opposite is also true. So the fruit of your lips is negative. The fruit of your lips is taking away well, guess what? It's always going to have a ripple effect on the people that you are helping support and people that look up to you. Yeah, you start to get to a point where you're just like, oh, thanks. Okay, so let's go back. With the move to Atlanta, what was the goal? Just get signed, like get famous, get big, make my music work. Yeah. Like any means necessary, shake any hand, like take any opportunity. Say. This is uh, respect because uh, I presume that before he moved out to Atlanta, but isn't it awesome that Atlanta right now is attracting and recruiting a lot of people, a lot of talent to Hotlanta. And um, oftentimes people say, man, I want success. I want to do some things, man. I'll do, I want to do it big, but yet they don't want to leave their couch. When you want to do something big in your life, you got to say, you know what? It's an inconvenience for me. Very difficult to be in a position where I'm gonna be uncomfortable because I'm leaving my friends, my family, my support network or my comfort zone. But man, I gotta go out there and I, I gotta sign a deal. I gotta shake some hands. I gotta put myself out there. I gotta take a 100% focus into my business and physically move and create new connections. So are you willing to do that work? There's a proverb out there that talks about laziness. It goes like this. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. So when it comes to your goals and your dreams, are you proactive? Are you initiating contact or are you just reacting or are you just going with the flow? So much much love here to Jack Harlow who went out there and uh, went out there to chase his dreams. Yes. Say yes. No season was far away. Mm -mm -mm. So when... You meet the generation now team, drama, cannon, shrewd people, great ears, yeah. some of the best ears in the business on any level, yeah. genre. How real did it feel to you? And how much did you feel you had to prove your place? I mean, I felt it a lot. Of course you do. And it was also, I was coming into a label where like, there was somebody that was red hot at the time. You know what I'm saying? That was just on fire and we're- How will you act when the intention is not on you? Sometimes people say, you know what, you know, I did my own thing. I got my indie deal. I've got uh, success here. I performed, he performed there. But now he's saying I'm coming to a house. He's coming to a stable. He's coming to a label. There's some hot artists where right now you're competing for the attention for that production company to promote you versus the hot artist. How are you going to act? Are you going to act entitled? Or are you going to say, you know what, let me prove my worth 
Let me show you what I can do. This reminds me of Genius on Netflix when, when Kanye said, you know what? Hey, Jay-Z, hey, Dame, you don't believe in me yet? I'm going to put my own money. I'm going to spend my own $30,000, put my, my own music video. I'm going to show you what I got. Even though you signed me already, you're not putting me on, even though you signed me, but you haven't promoted me. So he spent $30,000 of his own money. If you watched it, put it in the comment section below that you did watch Genius on Netflix. Definitely two different type of artists. So it didn't feel like I could slide right next to him. Like, yeah. here's another the same. It felt like I'm going to have to figure this out. But there's always been weight. There's still weight to it. Like, no matter where I'm at, like, I still, those three guys are just still like, I want to impress them. I want to get back to Atlanta and play them a verse that makes them be like, I still want that badly. And when we fight, we fight about the music. We debate, not fight, fight, but we debate. We go back and forth. This is, no, this is dope. No, this is, this is what you need to just say. Just pushing each other. I realize, like, it's just me wanting them to be like, you're perfect. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love it, man. Do you have friends like that? Who are your running buddies? Who do you rock with? You got people putting you down? Or you got people elevating you up? You got people there that says, you know what? You inspire me. Here's how you get better. Or, hey, you know, I'm just a yes man, yes man. Or people that just say hey, silent because you're making them feel uncomfortable and they write about you and tweet about you later on how much you're not doing your job or how much they can do better than you. There's a proverb about that. It goes like this. Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. So who you rocking with? Let's continue. You know what I'm saying? You're great. Like, just like how you want approval from your parents. Yes, that validation is so crazy. Like, I was talking to an artist about this the other day, and that sense of validation, that confidence that comes with it, it's such an important fuel, but it's also intoxicating, and it can lead you to a place where it actually does the opposite. And it, and it, it, it the validation you get yeah, from that isn't real. That. I got to work on that for sure. Yeah. Because, yeah, man, sometimes, you know, especially that's a danger, that's a dangerous area right there because. You know, validation means that uh, you're looking externally to validate who you are. Some of you guys may think about likes and comments and how many people found you on whatever social media platform you're on and think, oh man, nobody's validating me because nobody's liking me or commenting or subscribing, whatever the case may be. But if you know you're doing good work and the algorithms may not favor you, that can mess you up if you're looking for algorithm validation for many many years our youtube channel many many years our face none of our social media platforms especially a how-to uh, wealth channel financial channel doesn't get a lot of love as much as music videos or entertainment or squirrels surfboarding those type of channels right but you got to know that what you're putting out there is good and solid and if you think that your validation comes externally versus a small group of counselors yourself and or yourself that you're looking for millions of people to validate you versus the people that you can really trust in yourself and your work ethic and the courage to go out there and do something about it. Instead of you serving your purpose, now you're serving the validation of other people, which not is exactly what you're after and what your purpose is because you're going with the flow with them versus you leading the way. You know, Patrick but David Momento said, I don't care about being part of a clique. The only reason why I'm around the clique is because I'm leading the clique. Make sense? They said, you know, live by the cheers, die by the booze. Like, I've even seen Robert De Niro talk about just staying cool through the ups. Yeah. You know, just play it cool. Because when, when I do take downturns, when things do, it hits me. I'm like, mm. And the world's going to turn on me soon. Ah, uh, that's what I was going to ask you. Managing expectations, man. He's managing expectations. He's uh, enjoying the limelight, what it is. That's what, guys, that's, that's what makes Snoop Dogg so unique. That's what makes Sting so unique. That's what makes all these uh, uh, artists for 40, 50 years, they, be, they keep winning Oscars. They, see, they keep getting jobs. They keep uh, putting themselves out in the lot like, why? Because they keep reinventing themselves. They're staying relevant. You know how hard that is to do, to stay the same game, boom, 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 boom. And then when the world turns against you for a minute, what will you do at that point? He's managing expectations. He must have some wise people in his corner. That's con Let's continue to hear what he has to say. Because the world, the, I mean, people are, you know, Jack Harlow is like the likable guy, you know, everybody like, but there's going to come a time when they turn on me. Like, I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know why I'm not, I'm not trying to manifest it either, but I'm just saying like, inevitably that's what happens. I see sparks of it, just like any big artist sees, but 
all the people that are championing me are gonna turn on me, and I have a good feeling that they're gonna turn back around. I'm starting to realize my um, that humility is just more important than ever right now. It's a key part. He went over that really quick. They're gonna turn against me, and then after a while, you keep doing you, you keep fulfilling your purpose, you keep fulfilling your art, you stay with your, your game plan, your financial plan, your business plan. Guess what? Your haters then <laughs> become your cheerleaders. Like just keeping a hold of that because it's like, it's a long way down if you get with the hype. Well, this friendship that you've developed, and I, I'm not bringing his name in because he's one of the biggest superstars on the planet because I, I think it, he, it's probably been a real help to you getting to know him. Is he talking about Drake? He's talking about Drake, huh? Man, right, a great friend to have. An artist like Drake because <laughs> he is, and he won't <laughs> mind me saying this, I'm sure, and it's pretty common knowledge, he's an outlier. He's someone who made his way inside the room from another room altogether, and it was hard for him to barge his way in there, I think. From our conversation, at least, he definitely had his challenges. Is this something that you've been able to, and I know you like to keep your relationship to yourselves, and you should, it's friendship, but is that something that you guys discussed, that idea of validation that turns to, that turns on you, that idea of success turning on you? If he's so, so if Jack here is associating with Drake, he's asking Drake, what are some of the things that I need to anticipate that I don't even know to ask questions about yet? So I remember we did a reaction video on Nipsey Hussle, and one of the things that I, uh, I found out afterwards after doing that reaction video was Nipsey Hussle was asking 50 Cent about his. Uh, uh, about his record deal because a lot of his friends said, man, you know, you sold the deal and, and you sh instead of s calling it an album, you should you called it a mixtape instead and you made a mistake that way. He says, no, 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 I, I didn't make a mistake because if he sold an album, even though he was doing his indie stuff, uh, Nipsey was doing his uh, indie stuff. Top Moscow was hitting me. He like, bro, you killing him. You did one thing wrong though. I'm like, what? He like, you called it a mixtape. Like, you should have called it your album, bro. You tripped. I'm like, nah, because I ain't want to have a sales history. 50 Cent told me that, man. You know, years ago, he like hustle. Regardless of what they say, you in a good space because you never sold the album. So when you go back to negotiate your deal, you don't have a sales history. They're going to have to comp your prospective sales, which, which what they think you might do. If he sold his album and it flopped, before he got his real, real deal, before he got his multi, multi, multi million dollar deal, big deal, it was because it was based on the fact that he didn't have any sales history. Because if he had sales history and it flopped, then the record would come in and base his new deal about signing him on, would base it on that sales history. But 50 Cent gave him some wisdom and said, no, you don't want sales history. Go out there, just put it, quote, call, don't call it an album, call it a mixtape. Put a compilation of your best songs, but don't call it an album. That wisdom he got was from 50. And that, taking that wisdom and incorporating and implementing it, made him millions of dollars thanks to 50 Cent's wisdom. So I believe that's what Drake is doing here or his relationship, or Jack is doing here with Drake and their relationship together. He's learning from the OG. Uh, somebody has been there down, down the road. He's seeking wisdom. He's asking wisdom. He's not getting caught up in his hype saying, okay, I'm the, I'm the guy. I'm the star. I don't need to listen to anybody. I know what I'm doing. Listen, here's what, here's what I realize with a lot of these guys. Whether it's athletes, with the guys that I served in the military that achieved high rank, or the guys high in corporate America, with guys that high in their career or business or industry, or in this case, artists it's the same problems that people would deal with with finance with wealth power fame prosperity wealth being it's the same problems and opportunities they just call it differently they call it crypto these days they call it real estate they call it forex they call it insurance they call it these different entrepreneurs they call it metaverse it's the same trinkets just labeled differently opportunities just labeled differently but it's the same old universal problems and struggle that man and woman has had to deal with through the history of humankind. So that's my argument today is to build a business, to build your finances, to build your career on values and principles, not necessarily opportunities or philosophies. Why? Because those always change. Maybe in like small moments is covered. You know, we haven't had the big conversation, you know, what that means, but We've had our talks, and but more than anything, like I just like take notes of, from him on. Good for you. His actions, like he he's leaving a blue. Notice he didn't say his words. He said, "I take notes on his actions," because oftentimes people love to give advice, but they follow opposite. They talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. Who are you hanging with? Blueprint behind, you know what I'm saying? The same way Jay, yeah, left the blueprint. The same way Ye left the blueprint. That's like it. he's creating a blueprint, yeah, that. You don't have to, um, it doesn't, it's not rocket science to follow. You can just see, okay, these are some great decisions. Like, 
You just see it. And so yeah, everybody's looking for a silver bullet. Everybody's looking for the magic pill. What he is seeing already, and how old is this guy? How old? He's 24 years old. At 24 years old, that's the age I first started my business, but I'm nothing like this guy. Um, this guy's got so much going for him, man. And uh, the thing that he's got going for him is that, thank, good, thank goodness he's surrounding himself with good people. It sounds like he's got his head on straight. He's not getting caught up in the hype. He's not getting caught up in the fame and the fortune. He's not letting that corrupt him and make him think differently. So, so far so good with this guy, uh, but only time will tell. I just, um, I pull from the playbook all the legends where it resonates with me. I mean, Ye is a huge one for me. It just resonates with me massively. I see what he did. But I think it all just comes from um, just being the route of just not being a street artist in this because it's just something so traditionally street about this genre. And if you're not street, um, I'm not the first artist to come through that isn't that. And so inevitably, I'm going to take notes. You know, any any comparisons I see, I'm like, it's inevitable. Like, we're... Good for him for realizing what he brings to the table, what he doesn't bring to the table. And he's not trying to be something that he's not, but he loves the art. I mean, he loves hip hop. He, he loves the, he loves what that world brings, but he also recognizes that I can't speak from a position like I act so you know what I'm doing compared to these guys. These guys came from the street. I didn't come from the street, but yet I love the art, hip hop. I love the culture. I love what it brings to the table. I'm a part of that. He gets down with it. And, and good for him to recognize his strengths and weaknesses and how to adapt. So I'll wrap up with this. My biggest takeaway from watching Jack Harlow and many of the uh, artists we've reacted to in the past is that influence has less to do with our position, our title, our rank. Our influence has to do with more on the life that we live. Are you consistent? Are you making the right choices? Are you giving people the right credit where credit's due? These are some of the words and values and principles that will help you process once you start elevating in your endeavors as an entrepreneur. So that being said, I'd love to know your thoughts, your questions, your feedback. Put it in the comment section below. You agree with me? You don't agree with me? Love where this guy is going. I'm going to drive home today and uh, listen to more of what's popping. That being said, guys, uh, if you haven't done so already, please watch these other two reaction videos we've done here too as well. And if you're looking for a YouTube channel to help you think like a millionaire, to help you strategize like a millionaire, to help you become a first generation cash flow millionaire, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you watch this video, if you haven't done so already, please consider hitting like and also hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. And before I let you go, I'd love to know, who would you like for me to react to? Put it in the comment section below. We've heard of Wall Street Trapper. We've heard of JC. We heard of 50 Cent. Who would you like for me to react to next as it relates to faith-based leadership, wealth building, financial management, and generational wealth creation? So from Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.